G'day and welcome. This is part one of a two-part series where I'll be taking you on the journey with me of how I made my 18th century Jigglypuff cosplay. Part of this will be voiceover and parts of the audio will be pulled straight from the camera. Enjoy. Good evening and welcome to the vlogging section. So I am starting this off with the pocket hoops. I'm using this simplicity pattern uh, which was in conjunction with American Duchess and I'll be using their pattern for the overdress as well or rather the dress, the costume. Uh, it's currently the 2nd of April and I started this actually last night so hopefully that's not a foretelling that this is all going to be an April's Fool's joke. Fingers crossed, but yes, I have made good progress on this and now I'm hopefully going to get these finished rather quickly. So I can start with mocking up the dress, yes. And welcome to the voiceover. What I'm doing here is that I'm creating a channel out of ribbon for the boning to go through for the polka hoops. In hindsight, I should have used some cotton tape or some bias binding, but I'm using what I had on hand. All the pattern pieces are now cut, so now it's time for mock-up. But before we do that, I forgot to show you this. That's right, the pocket hoops are all complete. So now I have the base layer uh, and they fit nicely. They were really easy to put together, so loving it. And now I'm moving on to the mock-up stage. Nothing too crazy here, just cutting out the pattern as it is in my designated sizing. After I cut out all the pieces, I sew it together following the pattern's instructions. I'm not going to show you that though because it's pretty straightforward and you're going to see me do it with real fabric real soon. So this is where we're up to. I think I'm about halfway through the mock-up stage and it's coming together relatively easy. It's just so different to anything that I've ever made before. So it's actually really exciting for me as a sewer. So I'm really enjoying this process so far. Good evening! I have now finished the mock-up. I'm really, really happy with how it turned out overall. Uh, the, uh, there's a few little things that I need to change, so I need to take in um, up here on the stomacher. I need to lengthen the overskirt slightly just because it is a bit short, which is interesting because I'm five foot four nothing. Uh, I also need to play around with the stay stitches at the back. It's just not quite in the right spot. It needs to go up about an inch and a half I think uh, when I do the real one and of course I need to do the proper stitching on the back uh, on the real one. I also need to shorten the sleeve by about four centimeters. It's just hitting at a really awkward place um, underneath all of these extras extra fluff uh, but yeah overall really really interesting putting this together um, it's so so different and there was at one point where I had all this fabric and I was like how does this become a dress I don't understand how this becomes a dress but you know it did it's on my body that makes it a dress right anyway Onto the real fabric. So this looks like a whole bunch of random fabric pieces, but in reality it is all the pieces cut out for the base dress and petticoat. So I've ended up going with the polyfail um, for the main dress. It's very light and flowy and was really annoying to cut out. And for the petticoat and also the stomacher, I've got this thicker crepe which was super super easy to cut out and I was very happy when I got to it. So yes, now this is all cut out I can begin assembly so that's fun. So now on to the petticoat. I started off by sewing the seams and the side seams up to the designated spot and French seamed them. I rolled the excess at the tops and sewed those down too so that there were no raw edges at the split at the top. After I basted the top pleats into place I then overlocked both the top and the bottom of the skirt to stop them from fraying. After this step, I added the ties at the waist. These are used to tie the split petticoat together. Good evening, so the underskirt slash petticoat is now all complete, uh, at least the base of it is. I still got to trim it all and I need to hem it because it's a little bit long uh, because I am short. Uh, but I will do that after I've done the overdress and yeah, we'll, we'll go from there. But yeah, really happy with how that turned out. It's nice and light uh, and <laughs> it's just, it's like hips, hips for days. Loving it. <laughs> 
On to the main dress now. The first thing that I did was I sewed the back pieces together and the side pieces. Then I gave all the seams a really good press with the iron. Because there's no lining to the majority of the dress except for the bodice portion, I decided I wanted to do French seams. So firstly I cut down the seam allowance. And then sewed it again. The good thing about fail is that there's no wrong side to the fabric. With the first lot of seams completed, it was time to start on the big wide back pleats on just the two back pieces that were sewn together. Firstly, it was marked and pinned. Then it was stitched down. After this, I sewed the front panels to the back panels and marked out the next lot of pleat placements. Then I pinned and sewed it all together. It looks really confusing, but the pattern instructions made it very easy to understand what goes where, and it matches up really nicely. I remember feeling really impressed with it all, especially with getting such a wide piece of fabric to pleat down so nicely. With the outer layers mostly completed, I moved on to the lining of the bodice section. I sewed the front panels to the back panels first before this clip, which I forgot to film, sorry. The back is really interesting and allows for adjustments to the fit with ribbon ties on the inside, which I thought was super smart. The lining is then sewn directly to the outer layers and what you're seeing me do here is I'm actually understitching the lining and the outer fabrics as I wanted to avoid top stitching since I didn't know where my decorations were going to go at this point. Also after this point I did some stage stitches in the back to help the bodice keep its shape. And with that the outer dress was done. The stomacher was pretty straightforward to do. It was just simply two layers of the same crepe from the underskirt and some heavy interfacing wedged between it. I sewed it all together, flipped it right side out and then top stitched around the entire piece. Lastly for the base of the dress is the sleeves. I started off by sewing the outer fabric to the lining at the hem. Then I opened that up and sewed it down the length of the sleeve. It feels a little backwards, but doing it this way means that the hem is enclosed between the two layers. I then used my sleeve board to press the seams open. Fun fact, this board was actually my grandmother's and it was made to her by her dad, my great grandfather. Keeping it in the family. Next, I used a tailor's hand to press the hem so it finished it nicely. And of course, I then sewed the sleeve into the dress. So here is the base complete and on my body. Uh, yeah, it's interesting. Uh, I'm not sure if I was to make this again, I'd use the fail. It's just a little bit too slippery. Like it flows really nicely in the back, but the front pieces always, always want to like slip forward a whole heap and hang pretty straight. So I'm not sure what I'm going to do there necessarily. I might do nothing. It might be fine. Once I get all the trim on, uh, I'm just playing it by ear. Uh, I did add some length to the overdress and it's still a bit shorter than the like underskirt slash petticoat side of things. Uh, and the petticoat I'm needing to do up. I just feel like maybe I've got weird proportions. I don't know. Uh, but you know, overall it's, it's okay. I just think that I guess... At this stage, because like you, I'm so used to seeing sack back dresses with like all the bows and the frills and stuff. I'm looking at this. I'm like, man, this is boring. So uh, I guess the next thing to do, other than uh, that hem, is uh, to maybe start blinging it up a bit, and uh, maybe then I'll feel better about this project. <laughs> and that's all for this video. Make sure you subscribe and tune in for next week for part two when we begin to bling it all up. See you next time.